My hair to me feels like the rings of a tree. It's my history. It marks the passage of time in my life. I remember back in high school, I didn't really fit in. I was a minority and I would wear clothing that if I felt like when I walked out the door, no one would notice me, I was doing a great job. <laughs> so now, I, whenever I go into a clothing store, I immediately am like, okay, what stands out to me the most from this entire store? And that's what I'm gonna try on first. My taxi driver was like freaking out over my hair. And he's like, when a woman walks down the street and all heads turn to her because she's beautiful, that's a good thing because in that moment she has power. And I was like, okay, that's, it's obviously way more complicated than that. But like, I'm interested in that idea, having a look that commands power and thinking about that in the context of like everything I've been through in my life and owning that. I first dyed my hair, well bleached it blonde when I went public about being a survivor. I was assaulted on the first day of my sophomore year and didn't do anything about that for a long time. After it happened, I made my bed and went to sleep. I mean, I was obviously very ashamed of it, even though now I look back and I'm like, I shouldn't be ashamed of something that's not my fault. I ran into this woman at a party and we locked eyes and we're just like, we need to talk about something. Like we knew that we needed to meet up. And she was like, I had a violent relationship with the guy who I've heard raped you and the thing that happened to you happened to me over the course of like however long they've been dating. I met another woman who'd been raped by him and talked to the head of the society that he and I were both in and learned of three more cases that had been reported about him. Me, the initial woman I talked with and one of the other women reported our cases to the school in tandem. But back then it was like, oh, the three of them are colluding. We reported it to the police and the police were harassing me. And it just was a total circus for about a year. Our case was closed. There was nothing that was going to happen. And we really supported the work that Senator Gillibrand was doing about campus rape and knew that it would be valuable to keeping our classmates safe and it just kind of landed on me that I would be the one to come forward. It was at that moment, right before the press conference, that I decided I was going to bleach my hair blonde. Yeah. <laughs> Ever since then, it's always been a different yeah. color. I was incredibly scared because I was talking about my rape to a bunch of people that, like, that were strangers, but I think having control over my hair color gave me a bit of confidence. A big part of the process of going public with my assault was having to stop denying my anger and sadness. I was going to do something about this because I was hurt. Match's performance wasn't just about my rapist, it was about our rapist. And it was about trying to make sure that rape didn't happen anymore. <laughs> so I think that when people talk about it as such an individualized project, they lose sight of just how grave a danger we were all in. I knew he wasn't going to get kicked off campus and I knew he wasn't going to get put in jail. The whole point of Mattress Performance was that everything had failed us and we were stuck with him for one more year of school. The first half of Mattress Performance, it was purple and then the second half it was teal. Since then, I have pretty much changed my hair color every time I do a performance. So The Ship is Sinking is a performance I did a little over a year ago. And my hair is like hot, hot pink. It's just like I was very hot headed at that moment and I even like made my armpit hair and my pubic hair hot pink because I just want it to be like as ridiculous as possible. <laughs> well, there was a moment during Match's performance when I would get so many interview requests that my phone would just die. Reporters all had the same set of questions to ask and I was like, a robot would be really great at this job. So I made the robot. So I like took a, a mold of my body and reprinted myself and pre-recorded all of the answers to the questions and you could press a question and Emmatron would say the answer in my voice. So I did this performance where I could like, I was standing here and Emmatron was standing there and people could talk to me and ask me anything they wanted but if they asked something that Emmatron was better equipped to answer, I would like politely direct them to 
Emitron. I was feeling a lot of identification with this robot of myself that I had made. And I think that's when I started to want to stop using she. They is a more accurate pronoun for me than she because of the levels of objectification I've gone through. And I mean, even rape itself is an objectification of a human being, right? And that's something I definitely felt. I was like, oh, I'm no more than an object to this human. And yeah, it's something I feel on the inside. Like I look in, at myself in the mirror and I don't see she. The rape counselor at Columbia said, I'm certain that I can work with you and get you to the point where you are so okay with what happened that you could sit in a room with your attacker and not feel anything. That is not something I want. <laughs> For me, healing is going to be about accepting my pain and potentially feeling worse because that's just on the level of survival, like it's unsafe for me to be in the same room as this guy again. At my babysitter's granddaughter's sweet 16, there were so many people in the room who were all just like so happy for this one young woman. And I think about how many hands go into the making of a woman holding her, hugging her, feeding her, helping her get dressed. I just thought of how many people it takes to make a woman. That like some really careless man could completely desecrate all that labor. I believe in like being that person to raise your hand in class and say, no, this is a misogynist text. Being the person in the conversation to, in, to cut off someone and be like, that's racist, please stop. For me, feminism is, has a lot to do with solidarity for people of every gender, every race, every level of ability, and not just saying it, but acting in a way that makes that true.